Hi, everyone. So great to be joined here by Medical Alley Vice Chair Jody Hubler to talk about um, a really exciting a really exciting program, a really exciting day for the innovation economy here in Minnesota. Jody, thank you so much for being with us. Absolutely. It's great to be with you, Ben. Okay. So talking about this, uh, this new program, uh, $34 million is partnership, the University of Minnesota and the state of Minnesota, really targeting those early stage venture backed companies uh, here in Medical Alley. Jody, you know, how do you see this program impacting the startup community? Yeah, thanks, Ben. I, um, as I said yesterday, it's an exciting day. It's an exciting day for the um, state of Minnesota's entrepreneurs and job creators. This has been uh, something that has been contemplated across multiple industries, multiple associations, the, the state and the governor's office, as well as a number of different um, organizations and institutions across. And we finally got a, a first round here um, in this exciting news. Um, the federal dollars that have come in, this is part of the American Rescue Plan, specifically the Small State Business Credit Initiative, otherwise known as SSBCI. Um, federal money uh, deployed into the states um, to really shore up um, post-COVID, during COVID. And I view this as a really exciting opportunity to just extend into the value stream of innovators and entrepreneurs. Um, we see this as that next stage, in addition to the state's initiatives, to really address the gap in funding for those early stage investors. It's one thing to get grants. It's a whole nother thing to really get that next infusion of sizable capital that can help really jettison companies. You mentioned that gap there, too. I imagine some of these some of these early stage companies face a number of challenges. I know you've worked with many of them. What sort of challenges do these types of companies face? Yeah, it's multi pronged, right? Because you're you're starting across the attraction of talent. You're looking for um, product, even not even necessarily product market fit. You're really looking for that product um, iteration. You're looking for good pilot opportunity. There are the the search for good advisors for uh, crafting your first board. But that finance risk is one of the big ones. And the state has done a number of things through an, um, angel tax credit, through um, Launch Minnesota, through a number of grant programs and initiatives to really seed the innovation and the opportunities. But when it moves into that next round, which we would call the angel financing or the Series A financing, there's been a well-known and long um, frustrated gap in that um, move from angels and friends and families into Series A. And this is a effort to take that head on, to really go after establishing um, estate funds, moving into the partnership with the University of Minnesota, being able to leverage their um, expertise and the acceleration that that can provide, and getting this capital into the hands of those entrepreneurs where they can then start to really jettison the company, whether that's marketing materials, hiring the next round of talent, really deploying the technology, um, the procuring of different supplies and um, the necessities to really launch the company. It's multi-pronged, but this capital can help deal with and accelerate the ability to address those issues head on. Uh, Jody, I know you've also, you also serve on the Governor's Council for Economic Expansion, which of course has been charged with sort of reimagining Minnesota's economy to better serve the entire state. I'm curious, with this program, if you know of any others that have been really successful in addressing some of those issues and um, you know, why do you think some of these other programs work? Well, I really think that what I've noticed in the ecosystem, I've been involved for nearly two decades here. I was also a part of a startup very early in my career in the late 90s and early 2000s. What I've noticed about this ecosystem as of late in the last five years is that rather than the individual silos, there's been a concerted effort and an attempt to really stitch together the community and the ecosystem. There are many efforts underway, and we could we could kind of name check a number of them, um, whether that's Greater MSP and the Forge North efforts, whether that's um, Twin Cities Startup Week and the elevation and activation that is occurring across the community, um, the Techstars program and the initiatives from some of the large employers to really sponsor those. 
whether it's the efforts that we're seeing in new forms of capital, bread and butter, brown ventures. We've seen a number of different uh, people in the ecosystem, the U, continuing to advance the commercialization efforts and um, what Russ and his team there are doing. We're seeing it across states, work in Bemidji, work in Duluth, down in Rochester, um, all across the state. Launch Minnesota, I personally haven't been involved in that now for three years as chair of the advisory board. I've watched what Neela and team have done pre-COVID, um, miles on the road, um, traversing across the state to really try and drive that level of entrepreneurship. We're also trying to ensure a more equitable access to the efforts that can help differentiate business plan um, development to access to networks, um, that it doesn't have to be that you grew up in an ecosystem that had entrepreneurs or that um, has friends and family access to capital. How can we make it a more equitable and inclusive way through the use of technology, through the use of those ecosystems and communities to really engage people to have the courage to come along in that journey, to take their idea and ideation and really start to form that, cultivate it, and then grow it in a really meaningful way. So I've really seen that um, stitching of the ecosystem, really realizing that it's for the greater good of the entire state that we try to work together to, to raise and elevate that this is a state that's good for business, this is a state that wants to do business, and that this is a state that is very serious about um, driving an innovation and job creation economy. You kind of touched on my next question there too, Jody. which, you know, this, this program I know focuses on a number of different sectors, life sciences, of course, being mm -hmm. one of them. I'm curious what you think the long-term impact of a program like this and access to capital like this could be for some of these early stage startups in Minnesota. Yeah, I think it it's multi-pronged and I'm excited, Ben, to test a couple of hypotheses. I know that there is the near-term um, access to venture capital that is at the pace of innovation. It's one of the things we've heard over and over again, both you know, Medical Alley Starts and the work that Frank has done. You know, in the realizing the vision from 2018, we acknowledged that this was a problem, that we we were fairly good at starting companies. We had them languish at that inflection point of really getting that Series A capital. We heard it again inside of the Governor's Council work and our subgroup that was focused really on um, entrepreneurship and innovation that that gap in capital left companies languishing, that the um, innovations were finding their attraction or they're finding their fit, but they were were languishing. So one, it immediately starts to address that. You know, um, is it enough capital? It's a start. So in that start, we also get to change the narrative. It's no longer that we look like we are a state that's asking for others to come in and solve our problems for us. We actually are coming alongside those problems in a very demonstrative way. That changes the conversation that we can have when we have entrepreneurs going out to seek capital, that they can talk about having this opportunity to have a co-investor in this fund participating in that. That's a flywheel effect. That also starts to then be an attraction, starts to show, um, again, demonstrative evidence that the state is very focused on driving an innovative and entrepreneurial job creation economy. And others want to be a part of that. Others now want to come and lean in and see what's going on in the state of Minnesota. It's that next generation of, of, of innovators. I think yeah. sometimes people forget, you know, 3M and Medtronic were at one point startups too. So this is, uh, this is really important work. And um, Jody, I, I really appreciate your time and, uh, and your insight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Ben.